So, dear brothers, uh, till now we have studied some important subjects about uh, soul, how the soul dies, and that uh, there is nothing after death. So, man uh, remains in the grave, silent until the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also studied some of the misunderstandings uh, uh, which arise from the scriptures, uh, which are uh, which if not uh, properly interpreted, uh, uh, we might get uh, some doubts and all. So regarding uh, rich man Lazarus, uh, we have seen in the last week uh, that uh, what is it? Uh, what is the meaning of rich man Lazarus, brother? Krishna, brother? What is that rich man Lazarus we saw last week? It is parable, sir, not literal. Good, 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 good. Okay. Ashish, brother, can you tell me who is the rich man? Israel. Very good. So who is the beggar? Very good, very good. So we have seen these uh, things. So today uh, we are going to see the subject of hell because the next uh, natural question that comes to our mind is that uh, if soul dies, if there is nothing that goes to here, there and all, then what goes to hell? What is the meaning of hell in the Bible? So today we are going to take a free tour, a small tour to hell. We will go visit the hell of the Bible and come. Generally, the uh, you see, uh, hell means... Uh, uh, hell is a place of a torment uh, where uh, a lake of fire is there and all the people who are sinners uh, are thrown into this lake of fire to be burned eternally and they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, and they will be screaming uh, every now and then. But even after all these things, uh, there won't be any forgiveness of sins uh, and uh, their worms also will be there. It seems the worms won't die. It will totally destroy the body. And even uh, some uh, weird ideas uh, are there that uh, in the hell, uh, uh, daily, you see, uh, part by part of the body are plucked out. Uh, you see, they are dipped into, you see, deep boiling water or oil, <laughs> you see, and uh, slowly, uh, you see, they are burnt uh, or they are uh, put into hot water and boiling water. And uh, some people believe that they are put into, you see, uh, uh, oil fry like what you put on, uh, uh, you see, uh, frying items. Uh, and uh, the eyes will be plucked out. Uh, you see, the tongues will be plucked out if you are sinned with a tongue. And uh, a skin will be peeled out. Uh, and uh, it will be very tedious and hard labor for all the uh, people in hell. And, uh, and this one will be not there for one year or two years, but this will be for eternity to eternity. And they will be, you see, subjected to poisonous serpents and scorpions, you see. And uh, you know, the one uh, strange thing about this is that, uh, you see, Jesus Christ visits uh, this hell every day, it seems. Almost uh, every day, Jesus visits the hell. And he sees all the prisoners uh, in hell. And even in spite uh, of their seeking forgiveness, Pleading for uh, mercy and grace, Jesus mercilessly just passes them like the tongue is saying, No, you had good time. Now it is a bad time for you. So it's a good time for them. You have to suffer, you suffer. Literally, Jesus tells them and walks away. Therefore, you see, and uh, who is the in charge of hell? You see, if you see, it is the devil. Devil is given the in charge of hell. And daily, his duty is to, you see, collect all the dead souls uh, from the earth. Uh, you see, daily so many people are dying, no? So all these uh, dead souls uh, are brought before uh, God and the judgment uh, takes place. And as for the judgment, uh, uh, they will be, you see, condemned. If they are done evil work, they will go to hell. If they are done uh, good work, uh, you see, they will be taken to heaven and uh, they will be in heaven uh, and singing hallelujah, hallelujah and praises to the Lord forever and ever. It seems if uh, you see uh, judgment uh, when it takes place, you see, uh, Satan will be the one who is having the ledger book, it seems. Uh, and he will be uh, daily scrutinizing the ledger book or oh, today whose sins are you see, full. So I need to go and take them and bring them to judgment. Uh, you see. So uh, these are all uh, thoughts which are got from a uh, certain bit of the scriptures. Sir. So let us read those scriptures. Job, first chapter, verse 6 and 7, brother. Job, first chapter, 6 and 7, brother.
Great Blue Lord Krishna Brother. Okay, sir. <laughs> Six and seven, no? Ah, yeah, brother. Now, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. See, daily all the angels came to give account to God. So even then Satan also came with himself. Then uh, you see God asked Satan, Oh, Satan, okay, how are you? So where have you been? And he tells, I have been uh, uh, going uh, to and fro in the earth. Uh, you see, walking up and down. Uh, it seems so. So, uh, uh, walking up and down uh, in the earth. Uh, so, you see, uh, so walking up and down means what? He uh, uh, is uh, roaming about in the earth, uh, seeking for all the dead souls and to capture them and to take to judgment uh, before God. That's the reason you are, uh, uh, you see, well, God asks, uh, have you observed my servant Job? Uh, he says, no. Uh, have you observed my servant Job? Yes, yes, I observed him. You have put a, you see, uh, a nice fence around him, so I can't touch him. So, these thoughts, uh, everybody think that, uh, you see, uh, Satan is the one who comes and picks all the dead body, all the dead souls from uh, earth and takes them to heaven, stand before God for judgment. Uh, you see, if, then, if uh, these scriptures are taken, you see, directly, as it is. But you need to see from the scripture's viewpoint, not by just taking one verse. We need to study the Bible here a little. There a little. Take all the verses from the Bible and see what does the Bible say about uh, you say hell. Dear brethren, if you see actually, forget about uh, Satan coming and collecting all the souls of the sinners and taking him to judgment before God. Actually, if you see, who is the greatest of all the sinners? It is Satan himself. It is the fallen angel himself. Then if you see properly, it is actually the devil and the fallen angels, those who are actually to be put into, you see, the lake of fire. You see, it is, isn't it? You see, actually, devil has to be in hell. He should be tormented. You see, forever and ever. But uh, the case seems to be the opposite way. Why? And moreover, you see, from birth to death, how much can a man sin? Let us take an example. If a man tries to live for a period of 100 years, you see, in 100 years, you see, there are so many days. You see, for a day, there are 24 hours in a day. In, in one day, in 24 hours, we take 8 hours to sleep. We take eight hours to work and we take eight hours, uh, you see, a spare time. Let us consider that after working for eight hours, after sleeping for eight hours, just only leftover of eight hours with us and we sin, you see, we sin, uh, you see, in such a way that continuously we commit uh, all sorts of uh, things against God for eight hours. Dear brethren, if eight hours means, that means uh, almost... Uh, 34% of a life uh, a man sins. Therefore, if a 100 year man, if he lives on this earth, then 34 years uh, he spends uh, in uh, committing sin against the Lord. Uh, then what was the judgment? What is the judgment that uh, God should give to him? He should be only, you see, 34 years of punishment in hell and not eternal torture. Isn't it? That is the God's scale of justice, no? Justice means what? Just. Correct. If a person has sinned for 34 years, then what should be the rightest judgment of God be? He should be only 34 years. And after 34 years, God should actually release him. And uh, if he asks for forgiveness, he should forgive him. But uh, here, the concept of hell, what we hear is that uh, even after committing sin, 
even after repenting also even after crying to god for justice and mercy you see god doesn't forgive them forever and ever you see forever and ever no end at all they will be tortured in hell itself how fair is it is it proper to give a uh, such a punishment for a, a person who has committed a sin for only 34 years even then you see we have seen uh, so much of tragedies in our life uh, like sabarmati express in godra you see bogi full of people were burnt alive petrol were poured uh, you see the doors were locked uh, you know railway you see bogies are made of full iron it was so hot to the tyrant that wherever the people went uh, you see they are roasted uh, in the fire they were within 5 minutes uh, the entire people of the bogi they died they scream like anything the people the screaming were heard by people outside you see how did the people feel you see how did the people feel how do we feel by seeing this uh, you see pictures dear brethren uh, you see in kumbakonam uh, a fire tragedy happened in tamil nadu suddenly the roof of the school you see fell on the children who were studying in the school so the small small children they were burned they were burned alive some people were half burnt you see they were burned they were brought to the you see hospitals they crying amma oh daddy mummy please save me please save me there is nothing can they can do but the body is half burnt can see the pathetic condition they scream is so loud the hospital people is of they get fed up they were then you see hitler they killed 60 lakh jews mercilessly they were did not give a proper water for them to drink also you see what is the judgment that we give to such persons in this world you see saddam hussein he killed many of the cities in iraq you see and uh, he tortured many of his people you see and burnt them alive see what was the judgment uh, that uh, saddam hussein was given you see by the court if you see it was uh, told to hang them to death dear brethren if you see all these things how do we feel do we feel that uh, our god is so loving that he's made a hell full of fire to burn all the sinners isn't it we do we feel happy do we feel any sinner who has been burnt alive in front of us if he is screaming ha huh, crying for mercy and help do we really feel happy really but then uh, this is uh, a totally opposite the character that is mentioned about god in the bible jesus was so merciful that those who ever uh, held his feet and begged for grace and mercy he granted them he never said no i can't give you no please go he never said uh, even the women said uh, o oh lord at least the dog seat the comes he was so touched by the words that uh, immediately granted her wish that is the character of jesus but the, if you see all these things this seems to be that our god is not actually what the god that is mentioned as per the bible this seems to be like other uh, mythological you see doctrines which uh, uh, in uh, which is believed in other uh, you see uh, religions uh, and do we believe that our god is like a you see a very ferocious uh, a person always trying to kill or torture somebody no dear brother if a if a dog bites us for example what will we do we will hit the dog that's all how much can we hit do we really hit the dog in such a way that will take the dog drag it put it alive into the boiling water and hit it in such a way that until it bleeds to death until it cries for mercy until it dies shall we hit it or else if a dog dies will we hang him and slowly start peeling his skin you see and pluck out his nails pluck out his eyes tongues everything take out all the tooth no dear none of the evil or a wicked persons will ever imagine to do it and why god has made a hell to torture all the people of this world the wicked people imagine if somebody comes to our house and doesn't repair the computer spoils the computer 
or if you spoil some equipment, will we hang them to death, dear brethren? You see? No. Then what is the meaning of the hell in the Bible? Really, brethren, there are so many incidents in the Bible that uh, God gave judgment to the wicked. What was the judgment that God gave to the wicked? Let us read a few verses. Numbers 16, chapter 33, brother. Read, brother. Number 16, 33. Krishna, brother, are you there? Can you read? Yes, yeah, I'm here, sir. It will take time because Bible is new, no? <laughs> okay, okay. Not a problem. I am here till... Okay, sir. I am reading. I'm good. They, they and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. You see, what happened? The wicked, huh? they went alive into the pit which seems. Then what happened? The earth closed. Then what happened? They were perished. Perished means what for the meaning? Huh? In Nepali? In yeah. Nepali? Ah, Nas. Ah. Nas. Just nasm. You see, gone forever. Not that they went to earth, they were preserved in hell, slowly boiled, slowly roasted. No, it says they perished from the congregation. You see, we got a beautiful example of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, Sodom and Gomorrah were so sinners that uh, God destroyed the entire country. How did God destroy the entire country? With fire. You see, the fire came from heaven and destroyed the entire country. You see, did God preserve the wicked people? Huh? Did God preserve the wicked people there? Did God roast them slowly into death? You see, and uh, torture them slowly? No. On the spot, they were consumed with fire. Everything. They were perished. They were destroyed. You see, once what happened? You see, the disciples went to a place to pick some food. But uh, unfortunately, the people of the uh, city did not allow them inside. They were cast out. Immediately, the disciples come and complain to Jesus saying, oh Lord, they did not uh, allow us inside. Give us the permission so that we may call fire from heaven and destroy them. You see? And that's a very good thought now because they are sinners. The sinners did not uh, allow the Lord uh, or the disciples to get inside the city. And this was a very good thought. Jesus, uh, you see, he would have really, it would have been very good if he, if he would have uh, brought the fire from heaven and destroyed them. But did uh, Jesus do so? Did Jesus do so? What was the reply of Jesus? Let us read. Look, 9 chapter, brother, 54 and 55, brother. Look, 9, 54 and 55, brother. Hmm. Krishna Badar, you are there? Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. 54 and 55, no? Yes. <clears throat> and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will do that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Alice did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You no, not that what manner of spirit you are of. Mm -hmm. Continue. You are of, no. Uh, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy man's means, lives, but to save them, and they went to another village. See? What did Jesus reply? Jesus never appreciated them. He rebuked them. You see? He corrected them saying, uh, you don't know what spirit you have. This is not the spirit of God. This is not what you are speaking. Is correct? No. Jesus never came to destroy the people's life. He came to save it. That was the reply of Jesus. Then all these things uh, puts a question into our mind saying, what is the meaning of hell in the Bible? You see, dear brethren, the word hell actually means, you see, in the Bible is to hide or to cover. Like, for example, 
what is this one, brother? Krishna, brother, what is this one? Window, sir. Window, good. So, what is this one? <laughs> Same, sir, windows. <laughs> Same, huh? <laughs> you see? You see, there is a difference in the name. In uh, 20, 30 years before, if you would have told windows, everybody would have showed the window of a house. But today, if you tell window, what will the people show? People will show, oh, that's a software company. Isn't it windows? Isn't it? Why? Because the name has changed. Based on the usage, based on as the days went on, the usage and the meaning of the names have changed. Like, for example, what is, what is this one, brother? Mouse. Then what is this one? Same, sir. Huh? <laughs> Same. See, the mouse. So what has happened? The mouse, the meaning has changed. You see, earlier mouse means what? Everybody says, oh, oh, rat, rat. But now, even if you go and ask a small child, he will also show the computer mouse only. Nobody will see the rat in the house. You see, what is the meaning of this one, brother? What is this one called as? Medicine. Medicine, huh? what type of medicine? Injection, syrup? Yes. Injection. Tablet. Tablet. Then what is this one? Tablet, sir. Is a tablet. See? See, the meaning has changed really. Well. Therefore, similarly, the meaning of hell actually has changed. Originally, well, when the Bible was printed, the meaning of hell was to bury. Was to hide. But today, that word meaning has totally changed. Actually, you see, in ancient English, if you see, they used to tell, you see, huh? Uh, I must uh, hell my potatoes. Means what? Not that I should send my potatoes to hell. So hell means what? Bury. I must bury my potatoes. That was the real meaning. See, this is a 15th century Cambridge uh, dictionary. I have it in my house. This is an ancient dictionary. Okay, 15th century original dictionary. Cambridge dictionary. dictionary. In that one, you see, what's the meaning of hell? That is given. Read, brother. Krishna, can you read? What's the meaning of is given there? Hell. Oh, hmm. I Ah, you see, so to hide, mean. this is the virgin meaning of the uh, hell in the Bible. But today, you see that the meaning is totally changed. Why it has changed, how it has come into such existence, we will be seeing all these things by God's grace in the future classes. Okay. But now, let us see what is the hell in the Bible. The word hell actually comes, uh, you see, 54 times in the entire Bible, in the KGV Bible, which you have, it comes 54 times. In Old Testament, 31 times, and New Testament, 23 times. And there are actually four, you see, uh, words that are used to express uh, hell in the Bible. One word is, uh, you see, in the Old Testament is Sheol, that is H7585. And uh, there are uh, three Greek words, that are used in the New Testament. One is Hades, other is Gehenna, and other is Tatoro. So there are four words actually used to translate the word hell in the Bible. You see, in Old Testament, Sheol, New Testament, Hades, Gehenna, Tartaro. You see, they have translated these words in various ways in the Bible. You see, actually, it's from the Hebrew word H7595 in the Old Testament, it comes 63 times. Sheol. And this word is been translated in three different types. Brother. Sometimes it is translated as grave, sometimes as hell, and sometimes it is been translated as pit also. But nowhere in the Old Testament it is translated as hell, fire in the Bible. Nowhere in the Old Testament, not even one word comes as hell fire in the Bible. But they are translated in these three different ways so many times. Why? Whenever it is speaking about the good person, they are translated as grave or pit. Whenever that word speaks about a bad person or wicked person, they are translated as hell. Like for example, you see, let us read a few verses. Genesis 37, 35, brother. Genesis 37, 35, brother. Uh. Read Krishna, brother. Okay, sir. Just a minute. Genesis 35, 
He said, no, 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 I can't believe this one. I will go down to the grave where Joseph is there. He says, that Greek word is translated from the Hebrew word. See, brother, you can see here, H7585. That is the Sheol. So, Sheol, you see, huh? it says, from Hades or the world of the dead. You see, it is translated as grave, hell, and pit. So, here, it is speaking about a good person, Jacob. So, while Jacob can definitely never go to hell, a place of torment, they have translated here as grave. Because uh, the natural thought is that a good person should go to heaven, no? And bad person only should go to hell. Therefore, it is speaking about Jacob. They have translated here as grave instead of word hell. Okay. Now, let us read uh, other incident also. Like uh, Psalms 917, brother. Psalms 917, brother. Huh. Psalm 917, okay. Oh. Uh, the wicked shall be drawn into hell and all the nations that forget God. Okay. Here, the wicked shall be drawn to hell. All who forget God, they should go to hell, it seems. Because this is suitable to their idea, no? All the wicked, where will they go? They will go to hell. But here, again, if you see, it is translated from the same Hebrew word, Sheol, dear brethren. Huh? Here, when it is speaking about a bad person, therefore, they are translated as hell. But while the same word speaking about a good person, they are translated as what? Ah? Grave. Grave. Why? Because... They have fixed their mind already that all the wicked should go to hell. Read Job 17, brother. 13 and 16, brother. If I wait, the grave is mine house. I have made my bed in the darkness. For 16, they shall go down to the bars of the pit. When I rest, together is in the dust. You see, here he's speaking about Job. So Job cannot be a wicked person. He seems to be a, he should definitely be a, he's a good person, not a doubt about it. He's a righteous person. So a righteous person cannot go to hell. Therefore, they are translated as what? Grave and pit. See, observe here. See, brother, H7585. Same word in 16 for H7585. That's sure. Here, huh? just because it is speaking about Job, a good person, they are translated as, you see, huh? grave and pit. You see, why not hell? Because how can the good persons go to hell? This clearly proves that the translators who are translated have translated as per the convenience. You see, when uh, we are studying three, three verses, in three verses, the Hebrew word is uh, sheol, and uh, the meaning of it uh, is uh, grave uh, in some place, in some other place is hell, and grave or pit. Uh, okay. So, by when he speaks about good person, you know, put a grave and uh, you see and pit. Uh, but when speaking about a you see bad person, they put as hell. This itself clearly proves that the word hell actually means a pit or a grave. If it was hell, a place of torment, they could have translated all the way in all the places same. But they never done it. Why? Because actually the word sheol. Grave, that is actually meaning not a place of torment. Okay, therefore, you see uh, the hell, the real hell is you now, you know, which is the real hell? Huh? Samshan Ghat. Uh, you is there now in your place, graveyard. That is the real meaning of the hell, a death uh, condition. So now, now let us come to the New Testament. In New Testament, Hades, the word Hades comes 11 times, and uh, Gehana, the word Gehana comes 12 times. And Tartaro comes uh, one time. 
So we're going to see a few examples from this uh, scripture, sir. Therefore, if you see the brand, the word uh, Hades is actually uh, the same and a similar word of the Old Testament, uh, Sheol. Okay? Whatever comes in the Old Testament, Sheol, it is the same thing that comes in the New Testament as Hades. Okay? See, Old Testament, Hades, uh, Old Testament, Sheol. But in New Testament, it is Hades. Uh, okay? For this one, no need to worry at all. Only one scripture is able to proof. One scripture is sufficient to prove it to you that, uh, you see, Hades means uh, uh, a grave. Acts 2.27, brother. Read Acts 2.27, brother. Uh. Acts 2.27, brother. Uh. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Ah, you see, what does he say? Acts 227, though we'd not leave my soul in hell. You will never leave my soul in hell. That word hell is again, uh, you see, uh, translated from AD. Eh? Now let us read the same word in the Old Testament, brother. Krishna, brother, can you read Psalms 1610, brother? You're there? Yes, sir. Uh, Psalms 1610. Psalm 1610. Yes. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. And they right hand there are pleasure for every more. Psalms 1610. Yeah. Huh? Uh, yeah. For the for the will not leave my soul in hell. Ah. Neither will those suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Corruption. See, the same word that is translated in the Old Testament as hell, that is from uh, Sheol. You see, that Sheol is New Testament, Hades. Both are one and the same. Therefore, in the Old Testament, uh, Sheol means grave means what? Uh, in the New Testament also, it is the same meaning, no difference. Okay? Therefore, you see, let us read one more verse, Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. Read with that. Huh? And I say also unto thee, that though mm. art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ah, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ah, that means hell means what? Huh? Grave. The power of death shall not prevail against the children of God. Let us read one more verse, Matthew 11, 23, brother. Matthew 11, 23. And though Kapurnam, hmm. which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if oh. the mighty works which have been done in day, have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. See, brought down to hell. What is the meaning of brought down to hell? Kapurnam shall be brought down to hell, it seems. Huh? So hell means what? Death condition. Yeah, almost dead city. You see, literally, the Capernaum city became like this. Earlier, it was like, uh, as shown in the photo, but below is the today's condition of uh, Capernaum. It's uh, like a dead city. Nobody is still living there. So, what Jesus said was actually fulfilled. That means uh, the Capernaum city was buried totally. So, okay. So, uh, there are other scriptures also. Uh, like, for example, uh, you see, uh, Revelation 118, brother. Revelation 118, brother, read, brother, please. Uh, I think it's uh, Revelation 118, brother. Huh? Krishna, brother, you're there? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, read it, brother. Revelation 118. 18. Oh. I am he that lived and was dead, and behold, I am alive for every more. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. See, he has the keys of hell and death. So this gives us a picture that uh, Jesus is the master. You see, he is the Lord of hell. Eh? He is the one who is having in charge of hell. No, actually. 
this verse has to be understood properly. Jesus is having the, you see, the keys of uh, death and grave. It is. The key means what? Uh, it is used to open something that is locked. Uh. So what was locked? Uh? Huh? What is the meaning of death in the Bible? Death in the Bible doesn't mean the last uh, moment uh, where we breath out our life. That is not the meaning of uh, death in the Bible, but death in the Bible means, you know what? Huh? Death in the Bible means the slow process from birth uh, till death. Uh, you see? Uh, the slow process of dying daily. That's why God told Adam, dying thou shall die. Daily suffering, sickness, sorrow, all these things. What Jesus says is that Jesus has the keys of uh, hell and death means, you know, what is the meaning of the run? Jesus at the second coming, if he is going to return, he is going to stop this death process in this world and people are going to start living. So he is going to open the keys of death and of grave means what? At the second coming of Jesus, all the dead people will be raised from the life. You see, they'll be raised to life from the grave. That is the time that Jesus is going to use this second key of death. So death and Hades means what? Already people who are dead, they're going to be raised back to life. And the people who are going to death, they will continue to live in Christ. This is in the thousand years. This is the meaning of uh, this verse. Okay. Now uh, Revelation 20, verse 14, brother. Revelation 20, verse 14, brother. Huh? Okay. Ah. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You see? This is a questioning point. It says, hell was cast into a lake of fire. Generally, what everybody think? Uh, huh? Hell, inside hell, there is a lake of fire. Correct? No, everybody thinks like that only, no? In hell, there is a lake of fire. But this verse says, hell itself was taken and put into a lake of fire. It seems. How is it possible? And what is the meaning of hell, if you see? What is the meaning of this one, if you see? Dear and the explanation is given there itself. That is saying, uh, eh? it is, this is what death? Second death. Second death. So this is the meaning of second death. So this is not literal lake of fire and literal hell where the wicked will be tormented uh, day and night, dear brethren. So this is actually speaking about uh, second death. So second death means what? After completely coming to knowledge of truth, after accepting Jesus as Savior, if somebody returns back and goes to the world, then he'll be dying and he'll be dying the second death. That is the meaning of this one. Dear brother. <coughs> Next up, the third, sorry, the second Greek word is Gehenna. This Gehenna is translated in the New Testament as hell. And this one comes in the Bible only 12 times. And wherever it comes, that word hellfire is used only in these 12 verses in the entire Bible, not more than that one. And therefore, what is the meaning of this Gehenna? If you see, uh, read that meaning of uh, uh, what is put there in the dictionary. Brother. Gehenna means what? Read, brother. Uh, can someone you read? And belly of hmm. a belly of Jerusalem used as a name for the place of everlasting punishment, hell, mm -hmm. strong Hebrew and Greek dictionaries. Ah, so if you see first line, it says, huh? origin, valley of the son of Enom, Kehana, or a valley of Jerusalem. So, there was a valley in Jerusalem, you see, and that valley was called as valley of Enom. You see, this place was called as Valley of Enoma. You see, that means this verse is referring to that uh, particular place uh, of the Bible that is called as Gehenna. You see, that's called as what? Uh, Gehenna in the Bible. You see, Gehenna means what? Uh, a place of uh, uh, Enoma Valley. 
Now, why the Shinom Valley is mentioned in the Bible? If you see the Buddhan, actually, in this valley, the god of Molech or Hinom was worshipped here. How they used to worship, if you see, those uh, were actually idols uh, made up of uh, pure metal and uh, it used to have an uh, animal's face uh, and it used to be hollow. They used to put a lot of food at the bottom and heat it in red hot. And uh, when the hands were so hot, uh, they used to put the child alive, you see, burning uh, on the hands of the uh, that uh, god uh, Molech, it seems. And the child used to burn there and there itself. It used to get uh, completely, you see, uh, uh, consumed by fire. And when God corrected them, they all came back to God. But then God told them not to use this place for any of their purpose because uh, this was a very bad place where they used to do things which were not commanded by God. And this place, after the people of Israel turned to God, this place they were not using for any other purpose. Hence, all the dust, you see, all the waste, all the refuse of the city was thrown at this place. This was like a dunk yard. You see, all the dunk. Huh? You see, huh? the dustbin, everything, you know, you see. All the waste of the entire city was thrown into this place, sir, it seems, sir. And this place was called as Valley of Phenom or Gehenna. See, the definition is given there. Let us read in the dictionary, brother. Uh, brother, can you read what is mentioned in the dictionary? Huh. Gehenna, the Valley of Phenom near Jerusalem, in which hmm. the Israelites hmm. signify the children's fall. See, huh? the Valley of Phenom near Jerusalem, in which? Israelites sacrificed their children to Molech. Huh? Hmm. Into which, at a later time, the refuse of the city was conveyed to be slowly burned in hell. Ah, there, later, all the refuse, all the waste of the city used to be huh? put there, it seems, sir. Slowly burned. This was the valley of Gehenna. Is it mentioned in the Bible? Yes, it is mentioned in the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 30 and 31, brother. Krishna, brother, can you read? For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations um, um, in the house which is called by my name to pollute it, pollute it, and they have built a uh, high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Enom. Mm. You see, which uh, they placed in the valley of, uh, valley of son of Enom, you see, uh, valley of son of Enom, correct, uh, next. Uh. To burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded not neither came it into my heart. You see, there the people used to burn the children. Where? Valley of Enom, for son of Enom. In that valley, they used to burn the children. This one was abomination to God. He says, no, which I commanded them not. I never commanded this one. They are doing themselves. Neither came into my heart. It never came into God's heart. If God never commanded this one for the wicked to do for the wicked. Huh? If this thought never entered God's mind, then do you think that he will be make a big place of hell to torture the entire mankind of this world? Surely no, brother. No, this thought never crossed God's mind also. Read Jeremiah 19, brother, 5 and 6, brother. Huh? They had built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offering unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor speak it, neither came it into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, 
nor the belly of the son of Hinnom, but the belly of Sorter. Ah, it shall never be called the valley of son of Hinnom. Huh? But the valley of slaughter. Why? Because they stopped offer the children to Hinnom God. But when they came back to God, God said, you should never use that place. It should be as a refuge place. The valley of slaughter. Hence, uh, you know what happened outside Jerusalem just to put all the garbage of the city into this valley of Hinnom. And there, one or the other places, fire is to be there. And uh, you see, if you go to a garbage place, if you lift so much of garbage, what will be there inside? Uh? Will there be uh, roses or uh, uh, yeah, you see uh, worms? Tell me, what will be there in the garbage? Krishna, huh? tell me, if you go to the garbage, if you lift the garbage, under the garbage, garbage what will be there? Will the worms be there? Worm, no. worm, huh? Worms, worm means what? Small, small animals. No, yes. Ah, Some correct. Ah, it will be there, no? Worms? Yeah. Ah, bacteria. It will bacteria. be there, huh? Yes. Ah, so, that is what Jesus was suffering. Okay? This place was called as Gehenna. Read with her. Isaiah 66, 24. Isaiah 66, 24. That is given in the Bible. Ah. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcass of the man that have transgressed against me, for their own shall not die, neither shall their fire be quinted, and they shall be uh, abhorring unto the unto all flesh. See, they should be abomination to all flesh. In this place, they what they used to do. They used to put all the worst of the criminal's body there. They used to never allow their burial in Jerusalem because they never wanted those people to come back in the resurrection. Hence, they thought if the body is destroyed, they won't come back in the resurrection. Therefore, they used to throw the bodies of these criminals in these places. Therefore, it says, uh, they'll see the dead body of the men who were transgressed against me. In the, if you throw a dead body in this place, what will happen? Fire will destroy the body or the worms will destroy the body. You see, that's what actually Jesus is suffering and giving us a lesson. The people thought if you throw a dead body, he can never come in the resurrection. He can never be in the kingdom of God. Okay? This is the thought that Jesus is using here to give us a lesson. Therefore, if you see, the word Gehenna comes only these 12 verses. Majority, it comes in the book of gospel. Only one time it comes in the book of uh, James. Okay, but all the rest of the things, dear brethren, it comes uh, in the gospel. Okay, now we know that uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, all the three gospels are parallel. So, for the sake of uh, convenience, we will consider only Mark 9 chapter. <coughs> okay, because the same things are repeating in the gospel. Okay. Mark 9, chapter 43 to 48, read brother. Mark 9, chapter 43 to 48, brother. Huh? Read, brother. Krishna, brother, read. Yes. And if they had hand offered thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life, men, than huh. having two hands to go into hell. Onto the fire that never shall be conquest. Okay. If your but hand sins, uh, Jesus says, it's better to cut off uh, your hands than to go with two hands into hell. Huh? What hell? Uh? Hell, where the fire is not quenched. Uh, worms, uh, don't die. Correct? Uh? So, everybody thinks that, oh, in hell, what is there? Fire is there. Huh? Correct? Uh? Continue. Uh? Uh, where there worm death not. And the fire is not quenched. And if they foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter hell into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, oh. into the fire that never shall be quenched. Ah, you see, what did Jesus say? Ah, if your ah, foot cause you to sin, better that cut off your water. 
Ready to cut off your huh? leg. Then to go with two huh? legs into where? Eternal. Huh? You see? Hell, where the fire is not quenched. Okay, now brother, continue brother. Next brother. Next. Uh, read brother. Read. Uh. Uh, where there warm death not and the fire is not quenched. And if then I offend thee, pluck into out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Mm, you see, if your eye causes you to sin, it is better to what? Eh? Better to eh? pluck out your eyes and to go with two eyes to where it seems uh, hell it seems. Okay? Where their uh, worms die not and their uh, I will say fire is not quenched. The same thing is repeated here again. Okay. So what is the meaning of this verse? So, if you take it like that only, what does Jesus say? If your hand causes you to sin, what we should do, brother? What we should do, brother? Cut off. Very good. Cut off our hands. Okay. If our left hand you say, commits a sin, what we should do? We should cut off our left hand. Then what about the right hand? Will right hand keep quieter? Huh? Okay. Forget Appa. Huh? If our hand sins, Jesus said to cut it off. Now, one of the apostles was there. His name was Peter. You see, when uh, they came to arrest Jesus, what did uh, Peter do? Peter immediately took the sword and smote the high priest soldier's ears. Correct, huh? So yes. Jesus uh, uh, could have told Peter, Peter, you have sinned with your hand. Now immediately take the knife, cut your hand off. He could have told no brother. Did mm -hmm. Jesus say? Jesus could have told no, but Jesus said that one. Huh? Jesus could have told Peter no brother to cut off his hands. Correct? No. No. Yes, but he, he did not say. Why? Because what Jesus said in Mark 9 chapter is not a literal statement. It has got a different meaning. What Jesus said, if your hand commits a sin, cut it off. Okay? Then what about the other hand? Will the other hand keep quiet? No. It will also commit sin. Then if you cut the two hands, huh? then uh, how can we serve the Lord? Okay? Now Jesus said, if your leg commits sin, huh? if your foot commits sin, what do you do? Cut off your foot. Okay, we will cut off our own foot. What will the other foot do? Will it not again commit crime? Will it not sin, brother? Will it sin it or not? Sin. Yes, then cut off this leg also. Okay, now what is left over? Jesus said, if your eyes sin, pluck it out. Okay, we will pluck one of our eyes, brother. What about the other eyes? Will it sin or not? Sin. Uh, then, if you pluck out both eyes, both hands, both legs, what is left over? How can we serve the Lord? Correct, no? Correct, no, brother? If you, if you yes. take out everything, we are left over with nothing. We don't have anything. You know, what can we offer to the Lord? So Jesus never said the little statement. Hands means what? Hand means in the Bible, our friends. Our relatives, our associates. You see, all these persons are very close to us. If they are drawing us from sin, huh? if they are drawing us away from the Lord to sin, what does Jesus say? Cut it off. Correct right now. If our hands, we say, no, oh, his brother is my right hand. Right hand means what? Huh? Chief favor. Huh? Right hand means what? Huh? Chief favor. Huh? Important. If there is a close friend who is taking you to sin, cut it off. Hand. Hand means okay. Leg means what? Huh? Walk of life. If you are going to Christmas, birthday, party, function, all these things and all, and to club, bar, disco, huh? and all uh, places which are against the will of God, we should cut it off. If we don't cut it off, then what will happen? 
we might lose our life entirely. Eyes means what in the Bible? The things which we see. We keep on seeing TV, magazine, Facebook, WhatsApp. You see? Eh? All these things and all. YouTube and all. And how will we make our salvation? How will we work out our salvation? Therefore, Jesus said, if these things are drawing you to sin, it's better that you cut it off. <coughs> this is what Jesus says. And Jesus is not saying a literal thing at all. If we don't cut off all these things, we will draw away from the Lord and go to second death. There are a lot of possibilities. Therefore, Jesus said, be careful about this one. Okay? Now, what is the meaning of uh, their worms die not and the fire is not quenched? Now, why did Jesus use that term? Because of this only, the thing that in hell, there is fire forever and ever, ever and ever and ever. Huh? And the worms, they die not. Huh? Now imagine in this garbage, huh? will the worms die or not, brother? Will there be worms or not? Yes, there will be. There will be. Till when it will be? Till when it will be, if you see, until if there is something for the worm to eat, the worms will be there. If there is nothing for the worm to eat, then worms will also die. Not that the worms are immortal, but it will stay forever and ever and ever. No, 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 no. That is not what Jesus said. Jesus said, until it consumes the body, it will be there. After that one, what will happen? The worms also will die, dear brethren. This is the real meaning. What Jesus tried to use here, that if you are not faithful to God, if you don't cut off sin, then what will happen? Huh? We will be consumed totally and go into a second death. Okay, dear brethren. Now let us read the last verse of a, a Greek word that is used for hell is tartaro. It is Third uh, uh, Greek word that is mentioned in the Bible, it comes only one time in the Bible. And that is in 2 Peter 2 4. And that is not mentioning about uh, human beings, but it is mentioning about uh, our God, uh, angels. Okay, let us read, brother. 2 Peter 2 4, brother. 2 Peter 2 4, brother. Uh. Hmm. For if God is spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved on judgment. See? What is uh, this verse say? It says, God spared not the angels, but put them to hell. Hell means what? Huh? Tormenta. No, no, no. The meaning is given there itself. Uh, chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. So what is this uh, word hell, if you see? It is from the Greek word Tartaro. Tartaro means what? Huh? Tartaro means a place of restriction, a dark restriction. That means the outer universe. We all know, we have heard this subject in the three worlds class. When Lucifer and the uh, fallen angels sinned in the first world, what did God do? You see, God took away that power to come in the flesh and go back in the spirit being. You see, when God took away that nature, what happened? These fallen angels who were in the flesh, they demanifested and went into the angelic body. Now, did they go to heaven if you see? No. They were actually bound in the earth atmosphere. Therefore, in the Bible, we see that in Ephesians, you see, uh, Lucifer is called as the, the prince of the power of the air. Correct? No? The prince of the power of the air. Lucifer today is ruling from the invisible sky. This is the place of restriction for the angels. That is the hell. That means they can neither come down nor can they go to heaven. They are in the earth atmosphere. This comes only one time in the Bible and that is in reference to the angels. Okay. Now let us read a uh, few verses. Uh, what is the uh, judgment uh, for the wicked? You see, regarding uh, that uh, people burning of sacrifices to more like, you see, do you see that this is what the idol looked like. Uh, it used to be a metal idol, and below it, they used to put a knot of wood and burn it uh, 
you see, and it used to be uh, burn it heavily, and it used to be uh, golden red. And they used to sacrifice the children on this uh, hands of the Molech God. And as soon as they were put, uh, you see, what used to happen? Uh, the children used to be totally, you see, uh, burnt alive on the spot. Uh, this was an abomination. I heard God says in Jeremiah 7 chapter, Jeremiah 19 chapter, if God did not uh, ever give this commandment, if this thought never came to his heart, then do you think that he is going to have a hell next to heaven to torment all the wicked of this world? Oh, dear brother, what is the punishment for the wicked? Psalms 145.20, brother. Read, brother. Psalms 145.20 and Psalms 37. Uh, Krishna, brother, you are there. Read. Yes, I am here. Psalm 145, no? Yeah, verse 20. 45, verse 20. The Lord preserved all them that love him, but all the wicked will go be destroyed. Uh, you see, what does I say? He preserved all that love him. But what will the God do for the wicked? What will he do, brother? Destroy. Destroy means what? Preserve it slowly, fry it. Huh? No. This time is what? Totally gone forever. He's not going to preserve them, dear brethren. He's going to destroy them. That is the meaning. See, read Psalms 37, 9 to 10 and 20. Uh. Psalms 37. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For it's a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yeah, wicked no, shall not be. Wicked shall not be. Little while, wicked shall not be there at all. Yeah. Those shall diligently consider his place. And you shall not find it. Then verse 20, brother. Huh? The wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. Shall they consume away? They shall consume away. They shall perish. They shall consume away. That's what the Bible says. The wicked shall not be preserved, dear brethren. Therefore, the Bible hell is actually not a place of torment, but a death condition. Grave. You see, that is called as hell in the Bible. Okay. The Lord uh, add the blessings to the these words. Kindly go through the notes and the recording. Okay. Any doubts you have, you can uh, kindly ask 